Dealing with the unthankful. Maria and Lisa were members of the same church. Lisa was going through a very difficult situation and often solicited prayers from Maria. Whenever Lisa called, Maria was there for her. Daytime, middle of the night, whether Maria was strong or tired, whether it was convenient for her or not, it didn't matter. If Lisa called, Maria would do whatever she could to encourage and pray for her. And if for any reason she wasn't available to pick Lisa's call, Maria was sure to return her call as soon as possible. Lisa was eventually delivered from the unpalatable situation she was in. Then suddenly Maria noticed a change in Lisa's attitude towards her. Lisa very obviously avoided greeting Maria whenever they ran into each other in church. And if Maria called Lisa's name in order to get her attention and say hello, the latter would snap at her. Maria searched herself but couldn't think of anything she could have done to offend Lisa so much. Then she remembered Psalm 19 verse 12. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. That's the New International Version. Maria concluded that she probably did something wrong to Lisa but wasn't aware of it. She decided to call Lisa up and ask what the problem was. She was ready to apologize because the Bible says we should pursue peace with all men. But then Lisa would not pick nor return Maria's calls. One day, Maria decided to block her number and call Lisa to see if she would pick. Lisa did pick. As soon as Lisa knew that it was Maria on the other line, on the other end, she said, I'll call you back, but never did. At this point, Maria's husband, Louis, told her that she had done her best and should just leave Lisa alone. She must never again go out of her way to try to speak to Lisa, either on the phone or in person. Maria began asking God to reveal to her what exactly was going on with Lisa. Then one day in church, Maria was sitting behind Lisa. Maria suddenly heard Lisa telling the person beside her that she, Lisa, hated Maria very much and couldn't just stand her presence. And what was her reason? Maria was always praying. Whenever you called to discuss your problems with her, she was ready to pray with you. No matter how many times you called during the day, she would either pick or return your call. Even if you called in the middle of the night, she would pick your call. Then sometimes if you ran into her, you would see her lips moving, which showed that she must be praying. Why was she always praying? What was her problem? Was she the only one that loved God and wanted to be in touch with him? Was she the only intercessor around? Maria was stunned by what she had. God definitely wanted her to hear those words, which was why even though they were sitting so close to each other, Lisa didn't seem to have noticed her. When Maria got home that night, she told Louis what she had heard from Lisa. Louis encouraged Maria, telling her that at least what Lisa was complaining about was something good. She didn't say that she hated Maria because she caught her committing sin and so saw her as a hypocrite. While Louis and Maria were discussing the issue, Maria's phone rang. It was Lisa calling. It surprised Maria picked the phone. Lisa informed Maria that she had arrived home after the church meeting to hear a message left on her phone by someone from her doctor's office. The caller wanted Lisa to call the doctor's office as soon as possible. Lisa was greatly troubled. Apparently, she had gone for checkup. She was afraid that the result probably showed that something was wrong with her. Maybe that was what her doctor wanted to discuss with her. Maria should please pray for her that if there was something wrong, the Lord should fix it before she went to see the doctor. She didn't want to receive any unsettling news. Maria prayed for Lisa, honestly and with all of her heart. Many of us know from experience what it feels like to go out of our way to be nice to people and then watch those same people walk away from us when their problems are over. In worst cases, the people you helped would even return to fight against you. There are people you bend over backwards to help, but they repay you with hatred, malice, or ill will. Ill will. The natural reaction is to be bitter towards such people and vow to never help them again. It's also natural to decide never to be good to anyone else because you don't want to be treated in such an ugly manner a second time. But because we are born of the Spirit of God, we are not supposed to act or react in the natural. We are to react to people and situations the way Jesus would. One thing that would prepare us to respond the godly way to people who repay us evil for good is to always consciously do all things as unto the Lord and not unto man. Colossians 3.23 That way, we know that our reward, thanks and so on, will come from the Father. If the people who are directly benefiting from our works thank and treat us nicely, that is just an extra and not the main thing. 
If they don't, it would not bother us at all because we were not doing it with the expectation of receiving thanks from them in the first place. Luke chapter 17 verse 10. In the same way, when you obey me, you should say we are unworthy servants who have simply done our duty. If this is our attitude, the enemy can never succeed in getting us to be offended because people we helped during their wilderness experience decided to hate and treat us like enemies after they received a positive change. When Jesus was here, his eyes were fixed on his father. Everything he did was to glorify God. Therefore, it didn't matter to him that among those who cried, crucify him, we are probably some who enjoyed the bread and fish he had given out earlier. According to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, one of the things that will happen in the last days is that people will be ungrateful. Do not allow this to stop you from doing good. Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. May the Lord help us all in Jesus' name. Amen.